Hey folks, this is Dana from HG Adventuring, and if you're following our channel, you know that we recently purchased this 2007 Mitsubishi Fuso, and we're in the process of turning it into an overland rig. Today, I'm going to take you through some of the modifications we've done to the chassis to make it more capable of going off-road and doing the type of travel that we want to do. As I mentioned before the break, we bought this old fire truck and we're in the process of converting it into a vehicle that can sustain longer term trips over rough terrain. After pushing the limits of our old rear wheel drive sprinter, we decided we wanted something a little bit more capable of navigating sand, snowy roads, and steep mountain paths. So we decided on the Mitsubishi Fuso platform. We settled on the Fuso platform because of its relative simplicity, high payload, and strong 4x4 system. But Mitsubishi originally sold this truck as a box or landscaping truck, so to unleash its hidden potential, we need to make a few modifications. First up, and most obvious, are the wheels and tires. This truck came stock with 32 inch tires and dualies on the rear. For around town and highway driving, that was great, but there are a few downfalls to dual rear tires when off road. So we swapped them out with these super single wheels imported from Australia into North America by a company called Fuso Off-Road. On the wheels, we mounted 37 inch Toyo tires. These are big tires, but the truck was geared so low that we now actually get slightly better gas mileage and still have plenty of torque off-road. Plus, our top speed before the red line has increased to about 73 miles per hour up from 65, which is a noticeable difference. The limited slip rear differential on the truck is huge, so these tires give us much more reasonable ground clearance. While we had the wheels off, we also upgraded the suspension. We used Alcan Springs in Grand Junction, Colorado for new custom designed leaf springs and paired those with Bilstein shocks. After we installed the springs, shocks, and wheels, we brought the truck to get a much needed alignment. After all that work, the ride quality of the truck has been transformed. When we drove this truck home, we were honestly scared about how rough the ride was. We were getting bounced all over the road. It was sketchy. While I might not classify the ride quality as smooth just yet, the new springs, shocks, and wheels have made it pleasant enough to drive and far more control feeling. Next up is the front end of the truck. We installed a large bumper, winch, and off-road lights. The bumper is made by ECB, again imported from Australia by Tony at Fuso Off-Road. It took us a whole day to install this bumper, but we're thrilled with the look it provides, as well as the front end protection from animal strikes and the solid mounting points for the winch and lights. Next, we have our Sherpa winch. This is capable of pulling 17,000 pounds. It's a synthetic line for safety and weight savings. With such a large vehicle, we want as many recovery options as we can get but we're not winching experts just yet, so we've been practicing using the winch in controlled settings before we need to use it for real. As you can see, we've had a lot of fun playing with our winch in a non-critical setting. Rounding out the front end are these ARB Solus lights. We've installed Baja Designs lights on our past trucks, but we've read good things about these lights, so we're giving them a try. The left side is a spot beam and the right side is a flood so that we illuminate both the near and far. So far, they are nice and bright. While the new gear we've bolted on is the exciting part of our build, I wanted to spend a moment talking about the other work we've done to the chassis before we put a box on it. I changed all the fluids in this rig and thanks to a video from Outliers Overland, changing the engine, transmission, transfer case, and differential oils was not too bad. Having the truck on 37s makes it easier to get underneath as well. While the previous owners of the truck took great care of it, it is always nice to know that we're starting with fresh fluids. Finally, we pressure washed the frame and treated the minimal amount of surface rust on the frame with a rust converter called Coroseal. We then painted black on top of this. Once the habitat goes on back of the truck, it's going to be hard to do anything, so we wanted to have a fresh start and ensure that our frame is a solid foundation for the camper. While I've taken you through the exterior modifications we've made to the truck so far, this project is just getting started. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can follow along on our Expedition Truck progress and the adventures we take it on. Thanks!